That is a beautiful picture, isn't it? And that is kind of like Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount because he was uh, had the, uh, the, the uh, Sea of Galilee there in the background. And that, by the way, is a pretty good uh, uh, microphone amplifier right there in itself. So, all right. So, uh, thank you for being here today. And may God bless you. Our title today, Different thinking, different thinking. I'm sure you remember the scripture in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs that says, as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. A lot of truth in that. A lot of truth in how we think, how we think about ourselves, how we see ourselves, how we see God, how we see our relationship to God. And then, I have preached from this scripture several times, and it's a very common scripture in Philippians that says, uh, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So that's the thought, the idea for our message this morning. Uh, different thinking. Different thinking. And uh, I hope all of us, in some ways, uh, every day, we look at things in a different view and we think differently than maybe what we used to think and maybe what's going on around us at the same time. I'm going to read a passage of Scripture found in Philippians chapter 2. Again, very familiar Scripture. Philippians chapter 2, we're going to begin with verse 1 and go through verse 13. I think you will remember these words as we go through them. The Apostle Paul, by the Holy Spirit, writing to these Philippian believers and to us, says, if there be any consolation in Christ, if there's, if there's good, and there is, if any comfort of love, and there is comfort, from the Lord Jesus. If any fellowship of the Spirit, and that is one of the beauties, I think, of, of our church, of our group. There's, there's that fellowship of love and of the Holy Spirit among us. If any bowels, of, bowels and mercies, you know, goodness. Verse 2, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded. Now, obviously, we all have different things that we think about. We all, all have different backgrounds. But there are some things that we can come together in our thinking. And that's what we want to do. Fulfill you my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. And then verse 5. Let this mind be in you. What mind? Well, we're looking at the mind of Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but verse 7 but made himself of no reputation he basically it means he emptied himself and took upon him the form of a servant he became a human in this world God but human and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God 
also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus. I love this verse. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. That day will come. That day will come. Verse 12. Wherefore, beloved, that's us, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. What you have within you, let that come out in your life. Verse 13, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things, verse 14, do all things without murmurings and disputings. But let's stop there. So, we're talking about different thinking. And these verses describe a different mindset and, and different thinking. As you look in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it is all about thinking differently. Thinking differently than the world thinks. Thinking differently even of what we may have thought at one time. In the Old Testament, God challenged several individuals and us into thinking differently. Remember, he came to Abraham. Here, Abraham was an idolater, wrapped up in idolatry with all his world around him, uh, worshiping idols of all kinds. <clears throat> and God called him and said, I want you to think differently. I'm going to do something in your life and I want you to think in a way that is different from everything you've ever thought. I want you to believe me. And the Bible says, and he believed God. And God counted him as his friend. Then you could look at Moses and Israel. When God called Moses and sent him to the people of Israel in Egyptian captivity, he had to work with Moses a little while and get him to think differently. Remember when God called him, you know, the burning bush, and God said, I want you to lead my people, and Moses' big thing was, well, you know, I've got to go before Pharaoh, said, I can't talk, I, I'm, I'm just not that kind of person. How many times do we come up with our own excuses and God says, think differently. Think about who I am, God says. Think about the power I have. And, and even in our own lives, we have to think about that. And then, as you look in the Old Testament, all of the prophets, all of the prophets that prophesied uh, from Moses on and, and, you know, Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel, Daniel, and all, all of those prophets, they were challenging Israel. They were speaking to God's people and say, you need to think differently. And that was their message. Now, we come to the New Testament, and there are a number of places as you go through the New Testament, especially the Gospel of Matthew. In the Gospel of Matthew and other places, other some of the other Gospels, Jesus challenged those religious leaders and the people that followed him, the multitudes. He challenged them to think differently. As you read through the Gospel of Matthew, you'll see where Jesus talking to uh, the Jews, the Jewish leaders, he says, he says these words, this is in Matthew, don't think that you can talk about Abraham being your father and that makes everything all right. Don't think about your connections. So don't think like that. He also said to them, to the religious leaders and to the multitudes, 
don't think that I am come to destroy the law and the prophets. You need to think differently about who I am, what I'm doing. He said about the uh, religious leaders praying. I like this part. He said to them, they think that by vain repetitions and high-sounding words that God hears them. But he says they're just fooling themselves. Their thinking had gotten off track. And then, and here's a interesting scripture. We don't think about this scripture very often, but this is found in Matthew chapter 10, 34. He says to the people, don't think that I am come to send peace on earth. Now that's an interesting thought. That's something to think about. That Jesus didn't just come to send peace on the earth. And that's what we want. We want peace. Wow! All of these things he, he says, Jesus said, to make the people think. And if you read in Matthew and Luke and some of the and the couple and the other gospels, one of his teaching techniques that he used, one of the things he used over and over again was parables to teach the people. The parable was kind of a, a story. And some of them were actually down-to-earth legitimate stories about individuals. Others were stories about life. But he used these parables to get them to think. I don't know if any of you have ever read much or uh, uh, much of the of Jewish writers, uh, rabbis and things like that. They love to tell stories. They love to take some story. It's about life and you're reading it and you're thinking, well, what's the, you know, what is this? And sometimes, you know, we tell a story today or we tell a joke or something and it's got to have a punchline or it's got to have a moral that just kind of jumps out and grabs you. Many of the stories these rabbis will tell, once they're done, you're sitting there scratching your head. What was that? There's no punchline. I don't see a moral to that story, but it's to make us think. And then Jesus said, talk about different thinking, especially in the world today. He said to them, lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. You talk about different thinking than the world. So we see from beginning to end in the scriptures the challenges for us to think differently. Now, when we do think differently, what areas does God want us to think differently? Well, I'd say one is about God himself. Sometimes we think in our minds who God is based on what others have told us, what maybe our parents told us, or what, what maybe we learned in some Sunday school somewhere. Sometimes our concept of God is from what others have told us. But as we look in the Scriptures, <clears throat> as we look at the life of Jesus, follow His teachings, that was one of the things he pointed out to the religious leaders. They had a misconception of who God is. I think we see that in our world today. As I said, I think it was last Sunday or the week before, one of the things that happens in every generation, they want to redefine God. And when they do that, he's always less than what he was before. I think in our world today, they, they have taken that term, God, and it has absolutely no reference, no a hint of semblance to who God really is. Sometimes you hear people paint God as, as the picture of this tyrant in heaven that is just waiting for people for someone to step out of line so that he can zap them 
You know, how many of you have those little bug zappers at home? You know, you hang up outside and that bug flies into it and you hear that crackle and you think, oh, he got another one. Some people think God is like that, that he's just waiting to zap you, to bring some punishment, some problem. And then sometimes people have the concept that God is such a loving God and a forgiving God and a good God and a generous God, and he is all of that. But he is also a just and righteous God. And he does not condone sin. He does not overlook things. And there are some things that he does that does bring people into judgment. So sometimes we need to change our thinking about God and see who he is from the scriptures. And then... Sometimes we need to think differently about ourselves. You know, it's easy, even as believers, it's easy to, to have a wrong concept of, of ourselves. Sometimes we can see ourselves as this, this sinful person who has done everything or a lot of things wrong and we've missed the mark. Well... Okay, so we are sinners. We are sinful people. But when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, that was covered by the blood of Jesus. And God does not see our sins. They're removed as far as the east is from the west. He sees the righteousness of Jesus. And I need to be reminded of that. You need to be reminded of that. We need to change our thinking about our relationship with God. You know, sometimes we, we have this relationship that, man, if I get out of line, he's going to do this or that, or I've faced all these problems because of the things I've done wrong. And the scripture says, if we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. God does not have a problem forgiving, forgiving you or me. But the problem sometimes is with me forgiving me. I need to think differently and again believe that my sins are forgiven and covered by the blood of Jesus. And then, uh, our life, our, our, our life, uh, again, about ourselves, but we sometimes need to think differently about what God is doing in our lives and about uh, each stage of our life. Uh, I was reading a, a devotional this morning, uh, <clears throat> and some of you uh, get this guy's uh, devotions, uh, uh, Don Laughlin, but he was talking about the fact that uh, he, he's, uh, what was it he said, 90% deaf in one ear and 50% deaf in the other ear, and both of his hearing aids went out. And so he can't hardly hear anything. And uh, he, anyway, at the end he said, you know, getting old is tough. Getting old is difficult. Getting old has its problems. Do I hear amen? <laughs> And so, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes we just need to think about, yeah, it has its problems, but what awaits us after this life? And so we need to change our thinking. And then about God's promises and plans for our lives. Uh, you know, I need to look at what God promises and believe that and trust that he has a plan and he is accomplishing that plan in my life, in your life, in the lives of others. Sometimes I just need to think differently. Now, finally, my final thought, and some of you are saying, thank God. <laughs> I'm tired of thinking differently. But... What happens when we do begin to think differently? So 
I believe different thinking, and when I use that term, I'm talking about godly thinking. Not worldly thinking, not the ideas of man today, not the latest fad, not what's on Facebook or any of the social things. I'm talking about God's thinking. What happens when my thinking changes? Well, it changes my values. It changes your values. Think in your life. You know, you, you don't see things like you did a year ago, five years ago, 20 years ago. Your, your values have changed. Kind of like the scripture where Jesus said, uh, you know, don't lay up treasures on this earth. I don't think you guys are laying up treasures on this earth. Your values have changed. Your, your, your goals have changed. What, what you want out of life, all of that has changed. Your desires and goals. Now, it didn't just happen overnight. And, and maybe not every value has changed or every desire or goal has changed, but some have. God's Spirit has worked in you and on you. And then... Different thinking changes our behavior. Now, perhaps someone here this morning, someone viewing on Facebook, perhaps you're that person that when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, your life changed from night to day. I mean, it was a complete change. Whatever you were, whatever direction you were headed, wrong, it turned around and it was a dramatic change. Or perhaps you know someone who was like this. Now, some of us, maybe that moment, that salvation time was not just an overnight or dramatic change. But for some, it was. And you or someone you know experienced that change in their life. But for others, God is working daily. Now, maybe you weren't, for whatever, however you want to express it, maybe you weren't the worst person in the world before you were saved, or the most ungodly person in the world. But maybe when you were saved, God just began by His Spirit changing one behavior at a time one thing at a time, and now you are where you are today. That's what different thinking can do. And I've used this before, and this was not original with me. It actually came from a sermon from Charles Stanley, to, to be exact. But along this line of thinking, different thinking produces different actions. Different actions produce different habits. Different habits produce different character. And different character produces different destiny. What you're going to be in this life. Our destiny for eternity is settled through the blood of Jesus. But there's a lot that can change from here to here to here in this life. And it comes back to our thinking. And again, all I can say is looking into the scriptures, God uses the scriptures by the Holy Spirit to begin that process of thinking. Here, the scriptures I read in Philippians. He says, let this mind be in you. This thinking, this outlook, how you see yourself, how you see God, how you see others, and God will take care of the results. The scripture says that Jesus basically emptied himself of that glory in heaven, became a human, came into this world as a tiny baby, grew up, 
as a servant, following God, serving Him. And then the scripture says, but God has highly exalted Him above everything else. Different thinking than my nature, my natural thinking, different thinking than this world's thinking, different thinking than whatever may be going on around you. Start thinking, and, and I'm saying this to me, start thinking the things God wants me to think, and He can take care of the rest. May we stand.